Okay, uh, this video is about transition. This is uh, something that a lot of golfers, even Tiger, uh, every, a lot of guys on the tour that have quick swings, uh, the transition from the backswing to the downswing, rhythm, how, whatever terminology you want to give to it, the transition from the backswing to the downswing is probably second only to the first part of the takeaway and some people will tell you it's even more important than the first part of the takeaway. For me, you know, it just depends on the individual. But the point of this, very important. Now, if you have a really, really fast backswing, Nick Price notwithstanding, it's really, really difficult to have a good transition. And you see this on ranges all over America. It's this, okay? That's terrible rhythm. There's no transition, the swing is short, it's quick, it's choppy. You don't want that. But what I see that I think is even worse is people who have convinced themselves that a slow backswing is how you have that slow down or the, the, the cure for I got quick is that Okay, I know that's an exaggeration, but I've seen some people swing that slow going back. The problem with a backswing that slow is, is it's almost impossible not to jerk it and snatch it on the way down. So, without exaggeration, it looks something like this. Okay, that's no good either. You wanna have a nice one, two, rip. some people like to count one, two, three, four, Whatever drill you use, you want to have a nice rhythm to your swing. The better the rhythm in your swing is, the better the transition is. So I like to call it a one, two, okay? Which brings me to the next point, pausing at the top. I think pausing at the top is bad for rhythm as well because it's hard for your body to sit there and be relaxed when you pause. So this is no good either. Okay, it's also hard to generate a lot of speed when you have that pause at the top. So rhythm is very important in the transition. Now, the next thing that goes on in the transition is how you start it. You have some people say lead with the lower body. Other people say increase the lag on the way down. Um, there's a hundred different ways people say to start the downswing. I happen to think that if you start the downswing by leading with the lower body, it'll be a jerky transition and your hands are no longer in sync with your lower body. Whereas if you start on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you start the downswing by trying to hold the lag, now it's out of sync with your lower body and with your shoulder turn and you've also narrowed your arc. So, to me, the, what I like to feel a transition is, is I understand that this rolling motion is what a natural release feels like. This is what a 90 degree shoulder turn to my spine feels like. And this is the lower body turning in sync with the upper body, okay? So to me, it's not about thinking about anything. It's about understanding what all of these feels, things feel like. And as long as you've made a proper shoulder turn, as long as you're working on what a proper release is, if you turn everything in sync, after you make that transition from the top of the swing, your lower body will be leading, your shoulders will be rotating and following the exact same amount that they were at the top of the backswing and the club will be releasing and using centrifugal force and because your upper body turning and your lower body turning to start the transition if the transition is good it will create the lag you want and that you can maximize excuse me the maximum amount of lag that you can have individually and if you allow the club and centrifugal force to release you're going to end up right there so transition is about rhythm and then working everything together from the top of the swing so you stay in sync and having a proper rhythm allows that everything working in sync to happen a lot more efficiently.